morning, everyone. It's June seventh, and uh, it's a beautiful day out. Uh, it's been a rough couple of weeks, uh, seeing things on TV and uh, COVID around, and things starting to open back up, and the sickness starting to rise again, and uh, the racism that has become rampant across our globe. And uh, as I think about it, I I wondered uh, how do we fix this? How do we go about correcting the mistakes that we've made and i guess it comes down to wisdom the wisdom to make the right choices i know some of the choices i've made in life have been both good and bad and some choices had great results while others had terrible ones and i'm sure you have experienced that yourself you've made a choice one time and it end up being bad and you've made a bad choice and sometimes it ends up being good I remember when I was in grade three, I had an orange bike. It was a small bike, and uh, I was quite small at the time, And but it went fast. It had a banana seat and uh, monkey bars on it. It was fast, and I loved riding it all over the place. I would do jumps and wheelies and whatever I could because I thought I was a great bike rider. And then one day, well, me and my friends made a ramp down at the track down at the end of my street, and the ramp was to jump over like three or four or five bikes or whatever it was. And I knew this jump was going to be spectacular and something I could easily do. And it was spectacular. It's important to know that when we, when I was a kid, uh, we didn't have helmets or knee pads for protection. The only protective gear we had was our shorts and t-shirts, which didn't give us much protection. So on this day, the ramp was ready and I got my bike and I gave it my all. I was going so fast, it felt like a million miles an hour. I was ready to make the jump. Then just as I was getting close, without warning, my chain came off. It was a sad scene as I went head over heels, face first, into the dirt. As I laid there, I wanted to scream and cry out in pain. But I was tough. I didn't cry because I was always told, boys don't cry. And then bleeding from my scrapes and cuts, my friends laughing at me, I picked up my bike and I went home. I discovered a truth that day. The choices I make have consequences. The choice to make that jump when I knew I wasn't ready, because that week I had been messing with my bike and I, uh, my chain was loose. And I didn't think it was going to come off, but because I was making the choice to adjust my bike, my chain was loose, and as a result, the chain came off. Now, not only did I get hers, but my bike was now junk. I never rode that bike again because it was broken. So the choices we make can easily be labeled right or wrong, can't they? For example, we know that that murder is wrong. Just ask the millions of people around the world who have been protesting the murder of George Floyd. The the cop who put the knee on his neck and choked him. Now, I'm sure that morning he didn't get up and say, today I'm going to kill a black man. That wasn't something he said. But the results of the choice of arresting him and putting his knee on his neck resulted in that man's death. Was it racism? Probably. He's seen George Floyd as being less than and deserving of. And that's racism. And that's a choice he made that morning and the other cops. And we see more decisions like that. The choice is to push a 70-some-year-old man down and knock his head off, uh, crack his head open, and then to walk away. The choices we make can have negative results. Yet sometimes our choices in life can't be boiled down into a simple right or wrong. The reason is because most of our choices in life aren't simple. For example, lying. Now, technically, we know lying is wrong. But what if there is a special circumstance? What if our spouse asks for our opinion on their outfit and we think it's not not the most flattering look? What do we say? Are we completely honest and tell them exactly what we think? Dear, that looks terrible on you. No, we say, yes, dear, you look beautiful. You see... That's a lie. But it's on it's that gray area, isn't it? 
there's a lot of situations where there's simple where there's a simple right or wrong answer and there are also times where there's no simple right or wrong answer in fact most of life falls somewhere in between so the question i want us to answer or to look at is how do we make decisions when the answer isn't obvious and when the way forward isn't clear and more than that if what we're doing isn't technically wrong, are these gray areas even a big deal? You see, this matters in our life. It matters because what we do now can affect us later. You see, our decisions aren't isolated moments. They're connecting us to a future where create, we are creating for ourselves and for others. And any decision we make, no matter how big or small it may seem, is building our future. It's building it for both good and bad. And sometimes we experience the result of a decision we've made the next day. And sometimes it takes years for that decision to, to really play out. Look at racism. It didn't happen overnight. It has been around since the beginning of time. There have always been people who think they're better than someone else. And it can be based on color or religion or whatever makes people look different than us, whoever us is. So every decision has a natural result and none of our decisions are made in a vacuum. They affect somebody. So how do we build the best future for ourselves and for others, making sure we do the right thing? You see, no matter what stage of life we're in, this is important because it matters. It matters how we make decisions today because our choices should get the best outcomes both now and later. We shouldn't be just looking for the now result. We need to look at what will happen down the road with my choice. There's a word that I think we should look at, and that word is wisdom. Wisdom isn't the same thing as being intelligent or knowledgeable. Wisdom provides clarity in unclear situations. It changes the decision from choosing between right and wrong to choosing what's best. And that's why wisdom can help us make better decisions, better choices, both now and later. The book of Proverbs is a book of, say, of wise sayings. It has a, a lot of solid advice for everyone, whether we're Christians or not. Now, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. This verse isn't talking about a specific situation, but it's a great launching pad for talking about wisdom. It says, trust God. Oh, we love to use that a lot in the church. Trust God. You get sick, and, and like my wife is sick with cancer, and you say, trust God. Well, trusting God isn't something we necessarily think about all that often when we're going through the difficult situations in life. When someone's sick, someone's hurt, we say, trust God. Yet what does it mean to trust God? What does it mean to put our hope in him? Well, I think it means to be confident in the one who made everything. It means we can depend on the character of God. If Jesus is the perfect representation of who God is, then we can know and believe that God loves us and can be trusted. We can believe that he does it. We can believe what he does is always right. So trust God, trust his understanding, and then don't lean or trust on your own understanding. I'll admit that this sounds a little weird because most of us think we should trust our, ourselves, right? But here's the thing, we only know what we know. In other words, our perspective is based on our family, our upbringing, where we've lived, what we've known, what we've learned. And no matter how much we, we have done or what we've, where we've been, there, there's a, we have a limited perspective. I don't know everything about you. You don't know everything about me. You don't know what it's like to live in a coal mining town. I don't know what it's like to live in a, a, a town that has a mill. Our factories. I don't know what that's like. Now consider God's perspective. He knows everything. He sees everything. He existed before time even began. However, if we're lucky, you and I will only exist at the most 100 years. And that's if we're lucky. We may have some experience in life, but cannot compare 
with the begin to compare with the eternal God. It can't. I wonder, who do you think sees life more clearly? Who can see situations and their possible outcomes better? That doesn't mean we're not intelligent. It just means God's perspective is limitless. He knows the outcomes. He knows the results. He knows even before we do things what's going to happen. We're very limited. Okay, so scripture tells us to trust God with all our hearts. Don't trust on our own understanding. And then in all of our ways, submit to him. Maybe you're asking, how do I do that? What does that look like in my life? And that's a question. The big idea is to get God involved in every part of our life. Don't box him into just Sunday morning services and that's it for the rest of the week. Or don't box him into certain times of the week or, or just when you worship. Invite him into everything. Count on him for everything. Pursue his presence regularly, no matter where we are or what we're doing. And finally, the proverb says, and he will show us which path to take. The problem is we have been having, the problems we have been having is we want to do things our way. We make our choices. We make our own choices. And as a result, we end up where we are in the world today with racism, sickness, violence. And so much more going on in the world because we trust ourselves. We don't put our hope in him. Trusting in God isn't a, isn't a promise that we'll have a carefree life or a problem-free existence. But when we live in tune with him, what he is like and how he desires we live, the right choice will become more obvious. The truth is that life doesn't always present a clear-cut choice. We regularly face questions that ask us to use our wisdom, to use the wisdom of God, but we don't. We react and go and do what we want to do our own way. After all, what do we do about an authority we just can't get on board with? How do we handle tensions with riots or protests or even COVID? How do we deal with that stuff? It's difficult to do it alone. What should we do when we need to do something that doesn't make us feel comfortable? The answer to these questions are found by gaining and using wisdom. To find wisdom and to avoid the pitfalls, we must trust God. Seek out his wisdom for our situation and, and get him involved in our life's journey. Life is complicated, and sometimes we're all going to make decisions we will regret later. I know I have, and that's just part of being human, isn't it? But we all want, but we, but we all want as few regrets as possible, and this is done by deciding to pursue wisdom in the gray areas of our life. What if we didn't just focus on our now, but thought about our later? What would happen if we made decisions with both now and later in mind? Instead of reacting immediately, we take the time, submit it to God, pray to him, and help him to make a, a decision for us. There are two questions I want us to think about before we finish. The first one is, what if we actively trusted God and sought his wisdom from scripture and other people? What would our future look like one year from now, five years from now, ten years from now? What if we made wise decisions to live better now and live better later? Stop looking for the, 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 the immediate result and think about the long term. And the second question is, what if we don't do this? What if we only lean on our own understanding and only make decisions based on our own perspective? What do you think could go wrong? What do you think could go right? What could we miss out on in our life? The choice is really up to us. We can choose to do things our own way, or we can choose to allow God to give us the wisdom and to help us on our journey. You know, we owe it to ourselves and to everyone to at least think about how we make decisions. Because what we do now will affect our later. And wisdom now can make us can help us miss mistakes later. And wisdom now can help us miss mistakes later. 
yes, this has been a hard week. And uh, I've been watching the news on CNN a lot and some other news channels. And it's hard to see. It's hard to understand how bad racism is in our world. When we sit in our own white world and we look at what uh, we have and we think everything's perfect. But people out there are hurting and suffering. And uh, we have to do something about it. We have to do something about it in the church. We have to stand up and uh, speak for those who have no voice. Because uh, lives matter. And I know it says black lives matter. And they do. They do matter to us. And um, we want to see people treated fairly and respectfully. And that they have freedom and the same rights everybody has. Freedom to love, freedom to work, freedom for a good education, freedom to have the proper food and be respected, freedom to be treated fairly, freedom to be respected by the police and authorities. There's so much that they, they uh, don't have. Proper health care, proper housing. And uh, same with our indigenous population, the same result. Now we sit in our white world and we just let it pass by. The choices we make to uh, just forget about it and push it aside, that's not my problem. Well, really it is our problem as Christians and as people uh, in this world. We need to change it for the better. And the only way we can do that is put our hope and trust in God. And uh, if you have racism in your life, if you uh, have hatred and hurt and suffering, if you're sick and lonely, if you just uh, need help, I ask you just to give your heart over to the Lord and let him help you through. Let him give you the wisdom to change from what you are to what you need to be. And I pray that you do that this week. I pray you have a healthy week and that God blesses and keeps you and keeps his light to shine upon you each and every moment of the day. And just let me uh, have a prayer with you this morning. Let us pray. Father God, I just pray for the people out there who uh, are hurting and suffering. I pray for a congregation. I pray for those who are lost, who don't know you. And I pray that they would turn their life over to you. Only you can change this world. In fact, you have by giving your son Jesus on the cross, dying for our sins. And if people would just believe and have faith and trust in you, everything would turn out okay. But we want to do things our own way, Lord. So we ask you to help us to have wisdom and give us strength and courage. Be with those who are sick and suffering. Keep us all healthy. And may uh, we come to realize that all lives matter and black lives matter and indigenous people's lives matter. And uh, we got to just step up and make sure that everybody's voice is heard equally in this nation and around the world. Uh, take care. And if you have any questions or concerns, email, message me if you want. Add me as a friend and message me or leave a comment below. Uh, do a like, leave a comment because I like to hear that uh, people are actually listening. And uh, I pray that you got to give you peace and rest this week. And I pray this all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.